You know, some of the nation's top infectious disease experts have urged caution around the drug hydroxychloroquine and its use in treating COVID-19. It's typically used to treat malaria and autoimmune diseases like arthritis. Well, Dr. Zach Jenkins is an infectious disease expert and associate professor of pharmacy practice at Cedarville University. Joining me now on the phone to talk about this because there's been a lot of questions surrounding how this is going to impact the decline of the virus we're seeing. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about it. For folks who don't know, can we break down what this drug really is? So, as you mentioned, hydroxychloroquine is an anti-malarial, and uh, where we actually first start to, started to think it had activity against the coronavirus, um, there were actually uh, some, some reports of it being used in the setting of SARS and MERS, which were other kinds of coronaviruses that occurred in the early 2000s. But the problem has been we haven't really had a lot of patient data. It's all pretty much been laboratory data. Mm. So we don't really know whether or not it's linked to good outcomes with patients. So, you know, this is why there's so much caution surrounding it because we don't know what it's going to do. The thing is, they're trying to find something that's going to combat what we're dealing with. Uh, do you think that this is going to eventually be what helps? So that's a great question. I, I will say this. Um, there's some data that looks like it may have a role to play. Um, but unfortunately, the reality is most of the data has been in smaller studies to date. Mm -hmm. There are some being conducted right now in the United States and throughout the world that I think will be a little bit more promising. More recently, I heard of one up in Michigan that's looking at about 3,000 patients using that specific agent. So that should give us some more meaningful information to, to move with. Um, but there are some other things that are also being discussed as well. And, and we'll kind of see what the uh, World Health Organization solidarity trial reveals about some of those other agents. You know, when you talk about these studies and the WHO looking into things, you know, I've got to try to find out kind of the timeline of when we think something that will work that we could actually use for people, a vaccine of any kind, could come down the pipe. Do you have an idea of a possible timeline, a ballpark of when we could see something like that? Sure. So um, as far as as far as treatment options, we should actually see some more data probably within the next three to four weeks on some of the different treatment uh, modalities that have been suggested. But insofar as the vaccination goes, um, it will probably be optimistically uh, maybe middle the middle of the winter by the time we have one available. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit more pessimistically, it might be the spring because it'll take a little bit of time to do the studies which are going on right now and then to start to mass produce that. Wow, when you say spring, you're talking next spring? That's that's the pessimistic view. Oh gosh, oh goodness. Well, we appreciate any insight you can give us. Uh, we appreciate you chatting with us about this as well, just to know if this drug is gonna have any effect and what's coming down the pipe. We appreciate it and I'm sure we'll be talking with you again soon. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.